All right, it's been a while since I've done a boot video here, so today I'm going to do a boot video about these Thorogood 10-inch tall Wildland firefighting boots. And really what's encouraged me to make this video is there's a small design flaw within the false tongue that I actually just figured out and corrected today, which has made these boots so much more comfortable to wear. So we'll talk about that a little later on in the video. These boots, I think they retail for about $300, but these were issued to me through my fire department. I'm a volunteer firefighter. And these, as mentioned earlier, are wildland firefighting boots. And what makes them wildland firefighting boots? Well, anytime a company manufactures any type of PPE for a firefighter, it has to conform to an NFPA standard, which I believe NFPA stands for National Fire Fighters Protection Agency, something like that. It's written on the tongue of these boots that these boots conform to NFPA 1977 standard on protective clothing and equipment for wildland firefighters. So these boots are purpose built for wildland firefighting. But as mentioned earlier on in this video, you can use these for logging, but again, they're, they're really purpose built for wildland firefighting. Let's talk about the construction of these boots a little bit. First thing I noticed when I picked these up, they're not too heavy, but the thickness of the leather, it's definitely a bit thicker than your standard work boot without question. And also these are 10 inch tall boots as where your typical work boot is anywhere between six to eight inches, depending on your preference. Which the benefit of having a taller boot and a boot with thicker leather is it provides better ankle roll protection. But there is a downfall to that. With a taller boot and thicker leather, you do lose some mobility, but I don't know about you guys, but if I'm fighting the fire on the side of a mountain, some uneven rocky terrain, I'd much rather have a tall boot and some thick leather to really protect my ankles as opposed to having something like this. So let's talk about the construction of these boots. First off, I like that it has this nice big leather loop on the back of the boot so it's easy to pull these on. Double stitching on that. If you go down the main seams of the boots, all triple stitching. This boot has a false tongue, which generally I like false tongues, but this is where the design flaw lies. Again, we'll talk about that in a minute here. But what is a false tongue? A false tongue is a sacrificial piece of leather designed to protect the main tongue of the boot. So when you pull down on these laces, the laces, if there was no false tongue, they would just tighten up on the main tongue of the boot. And over time, see, these are my everyday work boots. You look at that tongue, you can see all the damage that the laces have done to it. There's like permanent lace marks in there. So those boots are definitely gonna fail a lot sooner than these boots. So by having a false tongue, it just protects the main tongue of the boots. And I think it's generally a positive thing. The downfall with the false tongue is it's a little bit harder to really cinch up these boots. Going on to the underside of the boot, you have plenty of tread, so you get some really nice traction with these boots. And I like the shape of the boots. They really conform to the natural position of your foot. When I step into these boots, they are comfortable. Where I find them to be uncomfortable is when I'm wearing them for extended periods of time. All right, now let's talk about the design flaw of these boots and it's within the false tongue. So of course you get these boots from the factory, you get the false tongue, you go to lace them up. And when you lace them up, you'll find that there are only two holes in the false tongue. So you put the lace through the false tongue and then the lace has to run through the backside of the false tongue and then it comes out this little grommet right here. The issue is when you go to tighten up these boots, the false tongue is preventing you from really cinching up these boots because the lace lets out right here. So if I go to tighten these boots up, again, the false tongue is gonna prevent it from really tightening up on your foot. And that's a major problem right there. That's why these boots have always been so uncomfortable for me. So let me show you the solution, which is really simple. Here's my solution. Of course, when these boots come from the factory, the false tongue only has two holes. Well, all you do is make another set of holes right above the two holes that come from the factory. And what happens now, the laces come out right here as opposed to behind the false tongue. So when I go to tighten up this boot now, I can get these boots really tight. See, I can get them as tight as I want them. So really, it's a pretty critical design flaw and it has a really simple fix. I don't know why they don't just put two more holes in here from the factory. But after doing this modification, I can tell you that these boots 
feel so much more comfortable. They feel so much more snug on my foot, and it's so much easier to lace these up. I always wondered why I had such a problem trying to get these tight, and it was within the false tongue the whole time. Now, if you like, I could show you how to do this modification. It's incredibly simple. You can do this a variety of ways. You can take a drill bit. You can take a punch. You can make holes in leather however you want. Just when you go to do this, make sure that you don't penetrate the tongue of the boot. I'm just going to use this little bit on my drill. So I'd say maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch above the lower holes. Just make your hole. Pretty simple. Do the same thing the other side. Leather punch would work fine too. All right, so after you've done your modification, you added your two holes above the factory, two holes in the false tongue. Here's how you lace them back up. Basically, you lace up the first one, two, three, four grommets, and then take your lace. We're gonna go in the bottom hole, bottom factory hole. We're gonna pull out that slack. We're gonna come up and diagonally to one of the new holes we just made. So, and after I've gotten that lace through, I'm going to take the lace and come from the inside of the boot outward from this grommet. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Start at the bottom factory hole, pull out that slack, go up and diagonally, push that lace through, and we're going to come from the inside out through this grommet right here. Just pull out all that slack. This is going to make such a big difference. Now we're just going to take this boot, finish lacing it up the rest of the way. All right, let's do a quick test and make sure this modification worked, which I'm sure it's going to work. But if you actually look at where the grommets sit in the main leather of the boot, you can see that there's a little bit of waviness, a little bit of deformation. And I'm 100% sure that's directly related from the false tongue and not being able to really tighten this boot up. So let's tighten up these laces, give this a try. Look at that. That's just all the difference right there. And after doing this, these boots are going to be so much more comfortable to wear because I'm going to properly be able to fit them to my foot. Before I close this video, I'm sure I'm going to get that one smart guy out there that says, well, it has two factory holes in the false tongue. Why didn't you just take the laces, put them through the tongue and have them both come out on, on top of each other? Well, I thought about that earlier. Two issues. One, the holes aren't big enough to accommodate those two laces, which you could widen them out. But having two laces rubbing on each other, especially at such a high friction point, I, I think that's a really bad idea because those laces are going to fail right there. And of course, the holes aren't big enough to accommodate both laces. It's a silly design flaw. It's a shame because I'm sure there's a lot of boots out there that only have those two holes and, and people wonder why their boots don't fit them properly. So that's it for today's video. If you guys got something out of this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. As for the boots, they, they really are a nice set of boots and, and they have been holding up extremely well. It just had that one design flaw, which easily fix. Great for working on uneven terrain and brush fire. So if you're interested in these boots, I'll leave a link in the description as well. And I'll catch you on the next one.